Hey, how's it going, guys? You guys doing good? Uh, I'm just super blessed to be on this call. Super blessed that you guys plugged in. And uh, um, you know what? I just feel like God was talking to me. He was like, man, uh, I need you to uplift some people tonight. I need you to fire some people up. I need to, I need you to have some people. Maybe you're in a hole right now. Let me help you dig yourself out that hole. You know, people always need great people around them to lift them up, to encourage them to uh, inspire them. And that's what I'm here to do tonight. And that's going to start by number one is you are who you say you are. Like, for example, I remember my whole life, people tried to uh, put me in a box. People try to label me on who I was, right? For example, I went to San Fernando High School, uh, the worst high school in the San Fernando Valley. I sold chips in high school. Um, I, you know, I was a product of EBT. I was a product of welfare. And um, people labeled the, you know, they put, they tried, no, not, not they put, they tried to put the label of poverty on me. They tried to put the label of mediocrity on me. They tried to put the label of, oh, you know what? You're not smart, Danny. They tried to, you know, they tried to put those on me and um, I just wasn't taking them. And look, I just want you guys to know in John one, the Jewish leader sent men into the desert, right? So the Jewish leader sent men into the desert to find out who John the Baptist was because they were interested in him because this guy had influence, right? And you guys look, anytime you influence people, just know that people are gonna be interested in you, good or bad. So if people are talking about you, good or bad, that's a great thing. That means you're doing something amazing. That means you're doing something powerful. And look, check this out. So the Jewish leaders sent out men into the desert to try, you know, you know, to find out who John the Baptist was. And they heard a lot about him. And they asked him, you know, they, you know, they went into the, you know, uh, you know, they went into the desert, they will, you know, uh, uh, they went into the wilderness and they found out who John the Baptist was, but like, they asked him, Oh, are you God? And he goes, of course not. I'm not God. They asked him, are you Elijah? And he said, of course not. I'm, uh, you know, I'm not Elijah. And then they said, then tell us who you are so we could give an answer to those who sent us. And look, check this out. People will always try to you know, you know, imagine how tough that is. Imagine people coming up to you like, who are you, right? Explain yourself, right? Like, that's just a tough question to ask, right? But look, this is what I want you guys to notice. John didn't talk about his education level. John didn't talk about where he grew up. John didn't talk about, you know, maybe he, maybe he came from a dysfunctional family. People try to label, you know, he didn't put his labels on who he was. What he did is he actually went back to scripture and he went back to scripture and he told them who he was through scripture on how God talks about who John the Baptist was. So look, check this out. Look, look, what would you say? Look, you know, you know, he, you know, John went back to what the scripture said, you know, uh, you know, John went back to what the scripture was saying who John was, right? He didn't go back to say who man was. He went to say, hey, God, look, check this out. What, what do you say about me, right? And that's what matters, guys. So for example, but what would you say? You know, oh, you know, you know, imagine someone asking you like, oh, who are you? Are you going to say like, this is what most people say. Like, for example, guys, uh, you know, you know, in my business, I run across a lot, a lot of people. I run across uh, confident people. I run across insecure people. I run across maybe people that are battling, you know, battling things, you know, maybe people that, to have a dysfunctional home. I, I come across a lot of different types of people, but if someone asked you, hey, hey, who are you? I want to know who you are. Most people, guys, they say, oh, I'm the one that's battling an illness, right? I I'm the one that's battling cancer. I'm the one that's battling this. I'm the one that's battling that because they let the illness put a label on them. And look, check this out. Or, 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 or are you the type of person say, oh, you know what? I'm the one that my back's always hurting. Have you guys ever been at, at, you know, at work or maybe at the office or maybe, and then someone's always complaining, oh, my knee hurts. Oh, my back hurts. Oh, oh, you know what? My shoulder hurts. Right. And you know, most people, what they do is they talk about the label on them. Right. Or, or if someone asks you who you are, are you going to say, oh, I'm the one with the slow business? I'm the one, I'm, I'm the one with the small business. And you're like, check this out. This is how crazy it is, guys. Like, have you ever met someone who has a business and what do they label themselves? I'm a small business owner. They put small in front of their business because that's how people address themselves. And that's not how you're supposed to address yourself. 
I don't want small or mediocre or, or, or mediocre associated with my name and neither should you. You shouldn't want small or mediocre associated with your name or or, you know, maybe, you know, you know, have you guys ever heard someone say, oh, well, you know, I'm a little insecure. Stop saying that, you know, or, or have you ever met someone who say, oh, you know what? I'm not that educated. Stop saying that. That does not define you. You need to zip that up. That's not who you are. And look, check this out. You have to say what God, you have to, when people ask you who you are or when you're trying to explain yourself, explain it the way God explains it about you. How, how does God talk about you? And that's the most important thing that you guys have. You should say, this is what you should say. You should say, I'm strong. I'm anointed. I'm talented. I'm favored. I'm healthy. I'm blessed. I'm forgiven. Those are some attributes. Those are some those are some words that you should you should associate with yourself, right? You're blessed. You're talented. You do have what it takes. Instead of labeling yourself, oh, I'm insecure. You know what, Danny? I'm not great at talking to people. Or you know what? I've never been a people person. You need to stop putting those labels on your life. And because I'm telling you, that's the number one thing that's going to hold you back in this world. The number one, you know, the Bible explains your tongue is like a rudder of a ship. It's going to give you the direction of your life, right? So if you want positive direction, guess what? You need to speak life into your business. You need to speak life into your marriage. You need to speak life into your family. You know, I remember, I remember being in a, you know, in a tough situation with my family. And I, I just remember as a kid, when I was 15 years old, I was like, man, like my family's breaking apart. My family's doing this. My family's doing that. I don't want to bring it up because that's so negative. Right. But check this out. You know, I remember what changed was I was like, man, you know what? God's going to put my family back together. You know what? God, you know, God's going to take the alcohol addiction out of my dad. You know what? My, you know, my mom's, you know, you know, my mom's self-esteem is going to get restored. You know what? My sister's self-esteem is going to get restored. You know what? My family's going to get put back together. And that's what you need to be saying over your life, guys. I'm telling you, that's so powerful. Look, it's easy to wear the labels of I'm sick. I'm depressed. I'm anxious. You know, you know, it's easy to wear the labels of, oh, I'm defeated. You know, life's kicked me, you know, kicked me hard in the butt. You need to stop saying stuff like that. Most people say, look, you guys, most people say that's just who I am, right? Have you guys ever met people that just say, oh, you know what, Danny, I'm just insecure. That's just who I am. I've always been like that. No, you haven't. You've been saying, you've been selling yourself that lie for a long time. That's not who you are though, right? You need to stop saying, oh, you know what, Danny, I'm not that confident. No, you, you know, have you ever met someone that says, oh, that's just who I am? That's not who you are. That's what you've been selling yourself. That's what you've been buying. And look, no, no, that's not who you are. That's what, you, that's what you've been dealing with. That sickness, that's not who you are. That failure, that's not who you are. Those tough times, that's not who you are. That's just some stuff you've been dealing with. And that's how you gotta, that's how you gotta, that's how you gotta approach it. You can't approach it like that's who you are. You need to approach it. That's some stuff I'm dealing with, guys. Make sense, right? So look, don't let the difficulty become your identity. That's what most people do. You know, most people, oh man, you know what? I'm, you know, I'm from Pacoima, I'm from Silmar, I'm from Compton, I'm from South Central. And they let their difficulty become their identity. How could you, look, you guys, <laughs> you guys, I went to the worst high school in the San Fernando Valley. Like, for example, like my little sister today, she was telling me, cause she goes, you know, uh, my sister goes to Sierra Canyon. I'm not, I'm not afraid to announce it because, you know, the, the, you know, the school has great security, armed security. I'm like, dude, man, like, you know, my school has security too, but they weren't security guards, if you know what I'm saying, right? And my sister was like, hey, hey, brother, I need some new clothes because she likes wearing a lot of Kanye, right? And, and, and I'm like, okay, cool. Here, here's my card. Boom, go, you know, go order it. And I was like, but why do you need, but, but you don't, you don't like wearing Kanye no more? And she goes, dude, I feel awkward because I'm friends with people. I'm friends, you know, she was, I feel awkward because I'm sitting next to P. Diddy's daughter. We're talking and her dad has beef with Kanye. I just feel weird having a Kanye shirt. I'm like, man, that's crazy how she has to be careful on what she wears because of celebrity beef. I had to be careful on the colors I wore because of gang beef. I had to be careful what teams I wore because I was afraid of something happening to me. You guys see how fast you guys see that's the same problem, just different, right? And look, check this out. So you're, if you make a decision tonight to, to put your life into positivity, you, put, you, you make a decision to cut out all the negative of your life, your, your family's going to flip situations like mine did, right? Um, and look, check this out. Don't come into agreement with negative. That's what most people do. Most people come into agreement with it. You guys, once you start saying it, what you're really saying is I accept the, I accept the anxiety. I accept the depression. I accept the small base shop. I accept the mediocrity. You need to stop being in agreement 
you need to stop being in agreement on what what the devil's trying to sell you and look check this out you need to go back to what the creator of the universe says that's that's the most important thing right you need to go back to what the creator of the universe says he says you will look you will run and not get weary that's what he says look he says we will run and not get weary. So that means we we that that we that we're meant to go through life and not get tired. That's me. Well, I mean that that I mean not not get tired, but like not get defeated, right? You know, defeat is a is a form of uh you know you know it's a form of being tired. You know, you're gonna run life and you but you're not gonna get defeated. That's what the unit. You know, that's what the creator of the universe says about you. And like check this out. If you start saying what God says about you, you'll start seeing you you'll start seeing things turn around. I remember, you know, I remember when, um, I remember when I was, uh, getting started in my business guys, I was like, you know, I just remember accepting mediocrity all the freaking time. And I got tired of it, guys. I got tired of it. You know, I knew I was better than that. I knew I was underachieving. I knew I wasn't playing to my potential, but let's check this out. If you start saying what, if you start seeing what God says about you, you'll start seeing things turn around. And then I started walking into the rooms. I remember going into rooms of multimillionaires guys. And I used to be like scared. I used to be timid. I used to be the, I used to, I used to try to make these guys like me all the freaking time. And, and, and that wasn't me. That was never me. But I started seeing things, how God sees me. And I started walking into the room. I was like, I'm favored. I'm the one that brings the anointing in this room. I'm the one that brings the favor in this room. I'm the one that, I'm the one that they should be trying to impress. I'm the one that they should be trying to make friends with. And when you start seeing yourself, like, man, you're the one that brings favor into a room. Dude, you're not going to care who you impress. You're not going to care who's your friend because at the end of the day, you know who you are. And that's the most important thought. And that's the most important part. Look, there was a man who was so down. Look, you guys, this crazy story. There was a man who was so down on himself. And he said, and, and look, he, look, and he was talking about how many, you know, man, I made so many mistakes. You guys, we're human. That's what we're, that's what's going to happen. We're going to make mistakes. I made, dude, I made more mistakes than probably everybody on this call. We got about 400 people on this call. I made more mistakes than probably everybody on this call combined, guys. You know, I, 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 dude, I, I lived a crazy life before the company. I lived a crazy life before becoming a believer, right? I made mistakes. You know, I just, I just didn't like it, right? But look, check this out. There was this man who was so down on himself because he was like, man, I made so many mistakes. I didn't raise my children right. You know, his children were older. He was like, man, I didn't raise them the way I should have, right? He was struggling with addiction. You guys, I come from a family of addiction. My grandpa died of a heroin overdose when my, when my dad was three years old. My dad was addicted to alcohol my whole childhood, right? I struggled with a little addiction of, of uh, not, not drugs, not alcohol, Okay. I struggled a little addiction of women for a little bit. Right. And, 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 and you guys look, I broke it. I broke it because I was like, you know what? Addiction was on my, on my grandpa. Addiction was on my dad, but addiction is not going to be on me. And it's for sure not going to be on my kids. It's for sure not going to be on my kids. And, and you guys, you break that. So guess what? If there's a, if, if there's like a, if there's like a curse, like a generational thing of, if there's a generational thing of, of maybe laziness or maybe a mediocrity or maybe of insecurity or maybe of, of, of low self-esteem, guess what? That might have been on your grandma. That might have been on your mom. But guess what? It's not going to be on you forever. And you need to break that. And it's for sure not going to be on your kids. But you need to be the courageous one to break it, guys. I'm telling you right now. Look, he said, the guy was saying, I feel so unworthy. The same guy, he was like, I feel so unworthy. I don't deserve to be blessed. And that's what most people think when they made mistakes. I don't deserve to have God's favor. I thought that for a very long time. I was like, man, I got to number one in the financial services industry after four years. I'm like, man, what did I do to deserve this type of favor? What did I do to, to deserve this type of anointing? What did I do to, to, to deserve these type of blessings? And I felt unworthy. I didn't feel like I was good enough to have the team I have. I didn't feel like I was good enough to, you know, to have the organization I had. I didn't feel like I was worthy. And guess what? But, 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 but look, our worth is not who we are. So what God says we are. And God was like, man, Danny, you know, you don't feel worthy right now, but I, I promise you, I'm going to turn you into a champ. I'm going to turn you from a chump to a champ. And that's what I became guys. It was the most powerful thing in my life. Look, when you're down on yourself, it's not, it's, it's not doing anything productive. 
So you need to stop getting down on yourself. You know, there's so many people, you know, they have a bad day. And then, then <laughs> you know, one bad day turns into a bad week. A bad week turns into a bad month. A bad month turns into a bad year. Next thing you know, you're, you know, you're in a deep depression. But look, check this out. Look, when you're, when you're getting down on yourself, it's not doing anything productive. So why do it, right? That's the easy thing to do. But you need to, but you need to catch yourself. You need to check yourself. Like, man, okay, I'm getting down on myself. You know what? Let me go run a lap real quick. Let me go run down the block. Let me go to the bat. Whatever you got to do, you just can't get your, you can't get down on yourself, right? Look, the enemy is called the accuser. He will remind you of every mistake you made. And he's going to remind you every time you failed. I remember, I remember when I was, when, 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 I remember when my team was just exploding, man. Like, I mean, we're still exploding, dude. Like we're number one in the country. But what I'm saying is, I remember when it was like, it was like, dude, I felt like I couldn't do nothing wrong. And I remember that. And, and guess what? I remember the enemy creeping up in my head and he goes, Danny, you remember that one time you did this? You remember that one time you failed? Remember that one time? You remember that one mistake that you made? And I remember him telling me, I was, and, and guess what? For a long time, right? What happens is if you don't kick it out the door, guess what? It's going to stay in the corner. It's going to end up smelling up the whole house. So when you get negative thoughts, guess what you have to do? You have to kick that mug out the door. You got to be like, you're not welcome here. Get the hell out my house. Get the, <laughs> don't, get the heaven out my house, right? That's what you need to tell when you get negative thoughts. You're not allowed in my mind. And you need to, you need to have authority over it, guys. I'm telling you, look, check this out. Look he, look, he would love for you to wear these labels. Look, the devil would love for you to wear these labels. The label of unworthiness. The label of, you know what, you're washed up. You know, <laughs> you know what, guys? Like, man. And like my team was so used to, we were breaking a record every single month. Now it's like, okay, we're growing, but we're not crushing records like we were. And then I heard the devil say, oh man, you know what? You're washed up, Danny. You're not the same Danny from, from you're not the same Danny from 2017. You're not the same type of Danny. And I was like, dude, get the hell out my head. You don't belong here. I'm anointed. I'm favored. So don't, don't believe that you're washed up. Your time's coming, dude. I'm I promise you, look, don't wear the, the, don't wear the label. He would love for you to wear the label of a man with no future. Like there's some people on this call that maybe you think that you have a future. Maybe you don't. Right. But if you're wearing that label, like, like, for example, one of my mentors told me it was so powerful. He goes, Danny, if you believe you're going to be big, you will. If you don't believe you're going to be big, you won't. So if you believe that you have no future, guess what? You don't. If you believe that you have, a, you have a huge future, you do. So stop believing small. Stop believing mediocre. You know, <laughs> not mediocre. Mediocracy, right? Stop believing that kind of junk. And look, as long as you see yourself unworthy of undeserving, it's going to keep you where you are. So, so, so look, if you want to get out where you are, you need to start seeing yourself in a different way. That's why, that's why I'm trying to tell you guys. So look, instead of wearing those, those labels, why don't you say what God says about you? Like, I'm redeemed, I'm forgiven, I'm restored. And when you start saying those type of talks, dude, your whole life's going to change. Your whole family's going to change. Your whole business is going to change. I know we have a lot of people in the insurance industry on. I know I have a lot of realtors on right now. Dude, you're restored. Your business is going to change, dude. I promise you, you're going to go to the top. I promise you, I'm prophesizing over you. You're going to go to the top. And I'm telling you, this, this month is going to be your month. This month is going to be the month of breakthroughs. This we're in a season of abundance. You guys see the rain in California. I, I, I threw on my sweater. Dude, I was outside dancing. I'm like, man, I, I love the rain because the rain is, symbolizes abundance. And guess what? When it's raining, I'm just like, man, rain on me. Come on. I, I want abundance. I want to win. I want to be somebody. Right. So it's a season of abundance, guys. So 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 be ready. You better get your baskets open because because a big harvest about to come. If you believe it, receive it. Say you, so, you know, look, if you believe there's a big harvest coming, say, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Okay. Look, my past is over. Look, the devil will love for you to believe. Look, 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 check this out. My past is over. No, this is what you got to tell yourself. My past is over and my future is bright. My past is over and my future is bright. My, look, you guys, I remember sleeping in motels on Sepulveda Boulevard. It was one of the toughest times in my life, but that part of my life is over and my future is bright. And guess what? You might've had some difficult times. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe you watch your mom battle sickness. Maybe you watch your uncle battle addiction. Maybe you are dealing with depression, but guess what? That's over and your future's bright. If you believe it, say, I receive it. Come on. Uh, look, check this out. Who, look, look, <laughs> look, you guys, who do you say you are? I'm in my Glendale office right now with, with one of my brokers, Max. Uh, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys, we got the best environment in America, guys. Come on, give it up. Come on. Look, look, check this out. Look, but look, but <laughs> okay. But guys, look, who do you say you are, right? Who do you say you are? You look, you're not, look, not who the mistakes say you are, not who your friends say you are, not all the negative thoughts that say, not all the negative thoughts that say who you are, right? Who do you say you are, right? What, what you say overrides every negative word. What you say overrides every friend's words. What you say overrides everything negative in your life. So make sure what you speak is powerful. Look, what you say, what you say will allow it to come into your life. You remember I said you need to come into a, you can't go into agreement with negativity, but I'm asking you, get into agreement with freaking abundance. Get into agreement with God's favor. And I'm telling you, get into agreement because it's, it will come into your life. And look, check this out. Quit saying negative things about yourself. Don't say, I'm overweight. I'm undisciplined, right? Like, for example, I have 2,000 licensed insurance agents in my organization. And I'm like, dude, what's up, man? Where, 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 you know, where's your production been after the week? I'm told this week I've been undisciplined. You need to stop saying that, dude. You need to stop saying that you're, you're disciplined. You're a hard worker. Things are going to turn around. You need to stop saying I'm undisciplined. Look, I'll never get, look, you need to stop saying I'll never get out this neighborhood. I remember living in my grandma's, I remember living, living in my grandma's house in a bunk bed in the garage. And I just remember, like, I remember going to my, my grandpa was a gardener and he used to take me to the routes in Thousand Oaks. And I used to see these big old houses. And I remember going back to the garage and I remember just telling myself, man, I'm going to live in one of those houses one day, man, I, that those houses are for my family. Those houses are for my family. And you got to start that. That's where vision comes in. So you guys need to set a vision for where you want to live. You need to set a vision. You better dude. I want you to know the street you want to live on. I need you to be down to the details. If you want to live in Beverly Hills, I need you. I need you to know the damn street. If you want the car, I need you to know the damn color of the car. You guys understand that? I need you to know details, right? Look, the devil wants you to believe I'll never break this addiction, man. That addiction is nothing compared to God. That addiction is broken tonight. If you receive it, say I receive it. Look, check this out. Who do you say you are? Tell yourself, I'm blessed. I'm talented. I'm successful. I'm prosperous. I'm free. I, I'm free. I'm valuable. I'm a masterpiece. No one has your fingerprints. Last thing I'm going to leave you with. No one has your fingerprints. My fingerprints are my fingerprints. Your fingerprints are your fingerprints. No one has the same fingerprints. Nobody could do what you do. But look, but if you believe you're ordinary, you will never shine like how you're supposed to shine. You'll never shine like how you're meant to. So stop thinking you're ordinary. No one has your fingerprint. You're, you're ready for success. I believe in you guys. I love you guys. And God bless you guys. I love you. See, I, just, I just want you guys to win. Love you guys. See you guys.